Boom! What's going on, everyone? I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Steel, founder of Advantage Diecast, welcoming you to the warehouse on another episode of Toy Talk. Guys, tomorrow and Saturday, that would be Friday, November 6th, and Saturday, November 7th, 2020, is the 43rd annual National Farm Toy Show in Dyersville, Iowa. A quick note about the video clips running in this video. They were filmed at last year's show. To see highlights from this show, hit subscribe and ring the bell because I have another recap video coming of this year's show. Now, back to the video. I don't have to remind you that toy shows this year have mostly been canceled due to that worldwide event that can't be named. But luckily, this event is still going on. It has new show hours and a new location, but still going on. The Friday and Saturday show hours this year have been changed and Sunday events have been eliminated altogether. General admission on Friday the 6th is from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. with floor rights beginning at 9 a.m. General admission on Saturday the 7th is from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. with floor rights beginning at 9 a.m. The location of the main event has changed as well. It is going to be held in the former location of All American Homes, which is 1551 15th Avenue Southeast in Dyersville, Iowa. There is a link to a map to the show venue in the description below. It's just up the street from the National Farm Toy Museum in Dyersville, Iowa. The change isn't far from Beckman High School, where it has been held for years, and hopefully it will be the home of the show again in future years. <laughs> However, this change may not be so bad because it is putting the entire show within walking distance. The inside dealers will be in the former All-American Homes building with the farm toy displays at the National Farm Toy Museum. Cool. And there will be some outside vendors in a tent on the grounds around the museum. There's one with a so instead of needing a shuttle to get from the high school to the museum to the That's tents cool. to the park, all the event locations are actually close enough Cookie that you jars? can just walk easily between Cookie the jars? venues. Cookie jars. Uh, candy. Candy. It's going to be quite different this year than in previous years due to the restrictions in place. Like face masks are mandatory and the number of dealers is much lower. And the dealer tables were limited. But don't let those things discourage any of you from attending. Please though, if you feel ill or are at risk, stay home for your safety, along with following the CDC guidelines in these unprecedented times. For those of you who choose to stay home or are for other reasons unable to make it, like you're out in the field for harvest, I will have a recap video coming very soon to show off the highlights of the show and the events that took place. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so that you don't miss out. The show is still going to be epic. In my opinion, the changes may actually be a good thing. First, the main dealer building is all in one big room instead of scattered throughout hallways, classrooms, and other places in a high school. So proximity and ease of seeing every dealer's booth will be easier. There will also be food available for purchase. The sale of the food directly helps the Beckman High School Music Department. Prices are extremely reasonable and the food has always been outstanding in previous years. So make sure to help them out and get a great meal while you're there. With all the changes, I still hope to see you there. I will be in booth 71 for Advantage Diecast in the former All-American Homes building and will really enjoy seeing you all there in person. Now to talk about the video clips.
Hey everyone, this is Logan. I'm coming to you from the National Farm Toy Show here in Dyersville, Iowa. We're set up in the hallway here at Beckman High School where we've got the Advantage Diecast product line. We're showing off the C65s, so the yellow, the red, and the blue, which are the only ones left. And they're selling pretty quickly. We're almost completely out of red ones. Uh, we've also got our red and black bison by Chevrolet and also the Chevy Titan 90s here by Chevrolet, all on this display. The customers have been uh, raving about the quality of them. They've been buying them like crazy. Uh, this show is mainly all farm toys, farming community, farming town. So as expected, we've done pretty well with our C65 flatbeds because most of the farm ran on the old C65 flatbeds back in the day, using the move equipment grain. They used them to move equipment, grain, uh, pretty much everything on the farm. They were a classic farm truck. And here we go. This is the start of looking at some of the displays. Isn't that cool what people come up with for their farm toy displays? Most of them are done in 64 scale. And you'll see a lot of Justin displays stuff on these displays this guy made second place and then here's another one and the display contest what they have is multiple age ranges and sizes plus you have your different scales most do 64 scale but there are some large scale 32 and up to a 1 16th scale and yep, they do win trophies for making their displays. It is a big competition. Very nice. You got to use more see, than you, just your you uh, the rule of off kiss. the shelf items. You have to you follow the rule make of some kiss. custom stuff, That's and you have to use your simple. imagination on how you want to build your <laughs> yeah. actual layout. This one here, guys, this is a large scale. I like his trees. Yeah. That wild. Just look at those buildings. In this scale, you're scratch building literally everything because buildings just don't exist pre built in this big scale. In the 64 scale, you get plenty of pre-built buildings. If you're doing O gauge, you 143rd scale. There's tons of pre-built buildings. But when you get to this size, you're pretty much completely on your own for scenery and your buildings. Look at those trees; they look real. About all that you get really easily in this scale is equipment and vehicles. There's lots and lots of tractors and equipment in this size and other vehicles that'll match right up. But uh, look at the detail: the drainage ditch beside the road, gravel roads dirt in the fields, even a broke down wagon, putting a new tire on it, <laughs> isn't that awesome? These car with flashing lights. Now we're back down into another, a smaller scale, 64 scale. This looks like your first place winner for small scale. And at these events, there's multiple classes. There's age ranges plus your scale ranges. That just makes it a little bit more fair for the people that are competing. You know, you can't have an eight-year-old competing against the guy who's been building for 40 years. That's just not really fair. But so they they worked it out. And this one here, this display came over from Germany. They kept that. 
there's any butter in it, it caught before it went into the tank. Think and about that. They flew this from Germany to the U.S. and put it together. But anyway, they were neat guys. So, you know, I got a... And we're back to a couple more uh, vendors here that are still in the gymnasium. <laughs> you can see to protect the gym floor, they laid out a giant tarp across the gym floor. And this is Justin Displays. Justin Lockwood is the go-to guy if you need diorama accessories for your layout and to build your layout and make it one step above everybody else this is the guy you want to talk to he's available on Facebook and I don't know if he has a website yes, he does. Mm -hmm. and then we're back here at my booth showing off my trucks and my whole display I thought it was pretty neat. I found that turntable with a mirror base and put my trucks on it so people could really see them moving around. We went all out. We got uh, lights to put above, pin spots so that our uh, display is really lit up well so people can really see it. And those trucks just sparkle there. And something that no other manufacturer has done, I included showing off the interior tubs because there's so much of that detail, you really just can't see it inside the trucks. They're so small, you just can't see inside them. So I had our factory send over a couple of interior tubs not assembled so that we could put them out and show off yeah. the interior detail and show off how fine a work he did. I mean, it's just, wow. He, I, I'm just blown away at the detail that he could put into it. <laughs> and that's about it for highlights from last year. Now, as I said before, stay tuned because I'm going to have a recap video that's going to show off all the events of this year. And it's going to come within the next one to two weeks. So please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss it. I really appreciate each and every one of you as subscribers. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below on what you liked or what you didn't like about the video. And I just know that you've got some friends out there that would enjoy this video. So go on and give it a share with the share button. Please be sure to hit the thumbs up button to let YouTube know that you enjoyed this video and make sure you tap the subscribe button and join my YouTube family. I really appreciate each and every member of my YouTube family. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Steel, and I'll be back in the warehouse soon for another episode of Toy Talk.